Collishaw. I'm going to tell you about the project thresholds. You can't move this year without hearing something about virtual reality. It's like it's finally come out the developmental lab and become a feasible medium to work in. I've been looking for a project to make in VR for years, and I was having a curried lobster with my friend Pete James about 14 months ago when he mentioned the first ever exhibition of photography, which took place in 1839. I immediately thought, this is it. This is the project to make in virtual reality. To enable you to revisit the birth of something that's come to saturate our lives, this medium that spawned many others, the latest being this 360 degree immersion in image, virtual reality. The exhibition in 1839 was by Henry Fox Talbot, the man who invented the photographic negative, from which he could produce multiple positives and what became the catalyst for everything today we know as photography. The exhibition was organised by the BAAS, the British Association for the Advancement of Science, and also included many other technological innovations of the period, objects we've researched and are rebuilding digitally for the show. Henry Fox Talbot's process for fixing photographs weren't evolved enough to withstand light in 1839, so the images are almost impossible to see today. Like the building we're recreating, they are no longer visible to the public. A few of these images linger in light-proof vaults, and we've been consulting expert advice on the photographs that were likely to have been in the exhibition. A catalogue of the 93 images exists, and is instrumental to the selection of works we'll be resurrecting. The structure I'm recreating was designed by Charles Barry, the architect who designed the House of Parliament in Westminster. It was a landmark building of the period, but was sadly bulldozed in 1926, and is currently the site of the Odeon Cinema. A group of Chartists, members of a 19th century protest movement, would appear outside the windows of the room. These, generally working class demonstrators, were angry about not having a vote, as well as concerned about the consequences of industrialisation and how it would potentially take away their jobs. Fox Talbot wrote letters before the exhibition, expressing his concern about the volatility of these protests and their potential threat to the security of the event. This is not unrelated to the situation today, where digital technology is making swaths of the human workforce redundant. Virtual reality may be entertaining, but it's also part of an acceleration of technology that we just don't know yet the consequences of. Pete James and I got together with Paul Tennant from Nottingham University Computer Science Department and VMI Studios in London to try and develop the idea into something that might actually work. Paul and his team are developing the movement detection side of the process which will calculate exactly where the other people in the room are as you wander around. They'll feed this information back to the VR engine which will update the visuals in your headset. This is currently being tested in a shed we've installed in the Mixed Reality Department in Nottingham. Nick and VMI are recreating the exhibition room and the exterior scenes in CG. They have a wealth of experience in creating virtual interiors for VR. What's innovative about this particular VR experience is the ability to walk around freely, untethered, and to be able to touch the objects that you're seeing in the VR headset. This is so far a relatively unexplored area of the medium. When you see content in good quality VR, it's uncanny, but when you can also touch those objects, it's utterly compelling. The actual room will be minimal, almost like a theatre set, constructed mainly with wood. You'll be able to look through the windows in the walls of the set and see the visitors with VR headsets inside. They won't be able to see you when you look through the windows. To them, the window will be a painting in a frame hanging on the wall. The experience is designed to create multiple levels of reality. Essentially, it's a virtual reality of a virtual reality of a reality. We've been discussing this idea with architectural historians world experts on the history of photography, the Science Museum, the British Library, the Royal Institution, Laycock Abbey, and the National Media Museum, Bradford. We visited all these sites and a number of others accumulating information that's relevant to the project. We now have four venues lined up for 2017, starting with Photo London at Somerset House in May, Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery in June, Laycock Abbey in September, and the New Media Museum, Bradford in November.